We think of Roman gladiators as formidable fighters, models of masculinity in indomitable military spirit. This attractive and popular image has continued to stir the imagination for centuries, in modern times it has migrated from history to fiction, enriching the fiction along the way and losing much of its authenticity. For example, not everyone knows that gladiators did not choose the weapons they wanted for themselves, but were divided into specialties according to the type of weapons. Let's take a look at who fought in the arena of death in ancient Rome. Bestiaries were designed to fight against beasts of prey. In the beginning, they were criminals sentenced to death, in fact, given to the predators to devour. Armed with only a spear, they went out against lions and tigers. And, as it was intended, they died. But not always. And over time, much has changed, the bestiary began to undergo special training, armed with sword and shield, and fought the beasts for money. Venators were tamers of beasts and magicians of the ancient arena. Armed only with a pair of throwing lances, they mainly showed all sorts of tricks for the entertainment of the audience, for example, juggling snakes or subduing lions. The hoplomax were some of the most heavily armed gladiators. They were armed with a spear, a small shield, a dagger, a wrist brace on the right arm and a helmet with a visor. They were often used against more than one gladiator, their equipment allowed. They were equipped with chain mail and two daggers or short curved swords. Naturally, having neither a shield nor a long weapon, they had to twist around the enemy, relying on their skill and prowess. Dimahers were very dangerous. There were also gladiators who did not fight to the death, such as Legniarii, fighters armed with a whip or staff. Their task was to stun the enemy. They could also hold a metal whip that could break the bones of heavy gladiators as well as big animals. Myrmelons were armed with oval shields and swords, gladiuses. On their heads they wore a massive helmet with a crest in the form of a stylized fish. They were originally called Gauls because that was the armament with which captive Gaulish warriors entered the arena. Usually they were released against the Reciarii, such a fight symbolized fishing. The Reciarii had a net to cast on their enemies and a trident to finish off their entangled opponent. They also had a small dagger in reserve, which they certainly did not leave behind. That said, they wore almost no armor. It was not the most respected specialty, but it was also one of the most common. More often than not, the Retiarius fought against the Retiarius was the Securus, a heavy fighter with a rounded helmet, armed with a sword gladius and covered by a large shield. A poorly defended Retiarius could only be saved by his great mobility. The most dangerous were the Schizers, single gladiators who carried a gladius in one hand and a Schizer, a special attachment with a semicircular blade, in the other. Such weapons inflicted shallow but profusely bleeding wounds. Another heavy fighter was a Thracian. They were armed as real Thracian warriors, a massive helmet, a heavy shield and a Thracian curved sword. By the way, the famous Roman leader of the rebel slave Spartacus was a Thracian both by nationality and by gladiatorial profession. There were also equestrians among the gladiators. Equestrians were mounted, lightly armed gladiators who could throw a spear at an opponent and then had to dismount and fight on foot. They carried a light shield and gladius. Sagittarius mounted archers were among the few who had access to long-range combat in the arena, but their participation in combat required great caution, deadly arrows could fly outside the arena. The Romans were also fond of sea battles on artificial bodies of water. They involved Navmachiarii armed with short swords, boarding hooks and had a heavy spear for a single precise throw. Sometimes the ships were set on fire for show, in this case the Navmachiarians had heavy jugs of water, which also served as weapons in close combat. Of course, there were many more types of gladiators and their composition changed over the centuries, but in general the tradition that divided the heroes of the arena into classes remained.